Yeah, this was my hometown. Oh my goodness. Well, the main reason is because below me, over all this area, there is a giant fire burning. We're Michael and Holliff, world travelers, avid scuba divers, and food lovers. <laughs> we quit our jobs in 2019 to travel the world full time. Mission success. Unfortunately, in 2020, we had to fly back home to the States due to the COVID pandemic. So, we bought a camper van, adopted a sweet German Shepherd named Kana, and now the three of us continue on with our full-time travel around North America in our home on wheels. On our last vlog, we explored the New River Gorge National Park in West Virginia. Flag in the, yes. National park. <laughs> the newest national park. Yes. Where we went on a whitewater rafting expedition in this ancient river. One, two, three. Our van life journey continues into central Pennsylvania, known for its lush, picturesque landscape, where we did a few touristy visits to some iconic destinations. Into the smooth, dark liquid. All you can smell here is chocolate, so the vast majority of people that are coming through here will be buying chocolate before they leave, as well as several national park sites in the middle of the state. And of course, this is Scranton, Pennsylvania. <laughs> We're approaching the coal region of Pennsylvania. How do you pronounce it? I pronounce it Schulkill. It's S C H Y U L. Schulkill? Schulkill. Is that right? Uh, and our main reason to visit the state this time is this the small community of Centralia. It's a hotspot for dark tourism in the state, as well as for curious onlookers like ourselves to check out. So what is Centralia and why are we here? Well, the main reason is because below me, over all this area, there is a giant fire burning. All this area used to be a large coal mine. Back in 1962, the city or the borough of Centralia, which has been incorporated since around the 1860s, hired a few firefighters to clear out the landfill, that they may not have extinguished that fire. And of course, that started the whole coal fire. And the problem came into focus when this gas station owner had actually put his dipstick to measure how much gas he had left in his tanks. When he pulled it out, it was like 170 degrees, which is like 70 something, just a little bit below boiling. So that's a problem, obviously. You don't want your gas to get that hot. Well, that all culminated when this kid was walking in his yard one day and a sinkhole opened and he fell in it. He didn't die, but that kind of got the government's attention. And what they did, they took about $40 million and came in and bought up all the property. So everybody took the offer except for a few people. It went from about 1,600 people all the way down to about 60. And then the government claimed eminent domain over this place in the 1990s, which took all the property away from everybody. It turned out there was a few people, as is America's way, who just weren't going to leave. So I think it was in, the, in 2016 or 2017 that they come up with a deal that the people who remain in Centralia, which I think is about nine people now, can live out the rest of their lives here. But when they die, all their property reverts to the government under eminent domain. So that's why we're here. You can tell it's really abandoned. From above, it looks just like a field with a grid lines going through with the pavement. So this ground can be a little bit dangerous, but I figure if it was really dangerous, they probably wouldn't let vehicles this size in here. Well, when you think about ghost town, you always think about tombstone or something like in the desert, like wild, wild west. But Pennsylvania actually has one of them. And this is completely deserted ghost town. If you're planning on going to Centralia, don't expect much. As intriguing as it sounds, AKA things burning underneath your feet. The town itself is completely abandoned. Not even like a lot of standing buildings. I honestly don't think they try to encourage any tourism here. Therefore, there's not really comprehensive spots where you can find listed online. Good girl, stay close. Just gonna walk around a little bit just to show you the essence of Centralia. Of course, we're going to be extra careful just in case anything opens up on the ground or some vent or any kind of 
activities, we're gonna be extremely careful. So the mass evacuation from the town was back in the mid 1980s. So therefore the road are technically still in good shape since the 1980s. Things like this still exist everywhere. Remnants of the fire hydrant, what used to be a house over here. Remnants of retaining wall. So this used to be some kind of structure over here. I'm not sure whether this is related to what's underground, but this tree doesn't really look so good. Seem like a better day. Used to be people's homes, just regular side road. There's a lot of these no parking signs all over town. It's the remnants of a sidewalk. Just your typical American town that is all abandoned now. It's a regular infrastructure, sewer line, manhole. So pretty much everything that you expect to find from a regular American town still exists here, except they don't have any more houses. And the interesting part about it is that nature actually takes course here start growing back into big trees and all the shrubs so it'll be interesting to actually see and come back here in like 20 years if this place still exists to see whether any remaining you know pavement and stuff here it really is an uneasy feeling to know that something is underground somewhere beneath our feet it's a burning coal mine some people still live here so there's some private signs like do not trespass and things like that but i haven't seen many of the uh, do not trespass sign from the state of pennsylvania they have three different cemeteries here they all kept really really well very clean i don't know why it's not abandoned them but just like you know move them away maybe i don't know so you say there's smokestacks yeah that are going. venting the mine somewhere yep up here yeah all right let's go find them Hopefully not die of carbon monoxide poisoning. What did see the vultures up there? Yeah. Just waiting for the last nine residents. Oh God. I assume that's not hot. It is really hot actually. Right. But it's also 90 degrees out today. So. <laughs> but this is one of the original vents for the mine itself. And I guess it's probably still venting carbon monoxide and smoke from the fire, but it doesn't look like to be venting much now, except for people's frustrations <laughs> in their graffiti. It's really warm here today. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's kind of because of the coal mine, heat or it's or the blazing sun i think it's just the the heat wave that we have to go through here in but central speaking of heat though there is enough coal under this thing <laughs> under this abandoned town apparently to burn for another 250 years that's so. a long time and of course at that time there will be nobody living here Just right behind me is the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, and this is the only church that is still operating here in town. After the whole town was condemned in the 1980s, they decided to take tear down the other churches. The bishop here did a survey of this land and discovered that the entire area sat on pretty solid ground and not over the coal mine, which was burning, so they decided to keep it. This is an active church. This is a place where every Sunday worshipers come here for mass. It has a graveyard behind it and the whole area is protected. In fact, there's no trespassing signs all over the place to let you know that this is a place for parishioners, their families and invited guests, and anybody else that goes on the property is trespassing and will be prosecuted. But it is a beautiful church. I can see why they want to protect it. A lot of curiosity seekers like us up here, so they want to keep people from going in and trampling the ground and defacing the church. Beside us here in the van is the town municipal building, and apparently they still hold meetings there. I recall reading that one of the things that they talked about was how in debt the town was and they had to actually pay a bill for $92 and that put the town in the black. So it's still running. It looks like there's a fire truck inside just in case one of the four or five buildings that still remains here goes up in flames, but otherwise pretty sleepy place. <laughs> there is a local highway here that was called the Highway 61 that was part of the agreement between the government and the people who decided that they're gonna to stay to cover up because there was a lot of graffiti on it and I would imagine it was probably vulgar or something. So the locals filled that in so you can't see it anymore. And right now we are walking towards the old Route 61, which was abandoned because of the fire and whatnot. Used to be dubbed as the graffiti highway because a lot of people left a lot of marks on the road. Now completely covered, unfortunately. Here we go. Yep, it looks like this right now. 
still remnants of the highway itself it's not really covered and of course people are still coming here and they leave new marks well it's not every day you're standing in the middle of an abandoned highway but here we are although i don't think it is a long stretch of highway that got rerouted still a lot of work it's got to be a lot of work the idea of covering this highway is that number one to cover up some profanity that people left behind and number two just to encourage some kind of growth Oop. you gotta be careful of the nature takes course of the human marks on the landscape but it's absolutely interesting i think this is a coal is it no looks shiny it's got to be a lot of dump trucks a lot of work to bring all the dirt to cover up this highway i'm not sure i'm gonna swim or even touch the water in the middle of our exploration we met this nice gentleman and he told us a few interesting personal stories about his old hometown. Yeah, this was my hometown. Oh my goodness. Where do you live now? Then we had to ask about the burning itself. Where could we see the smoke here? Not this time of year. When it's cold out, there are some times that you can see steam come up out of the ground. Well, there you go. You have it. You can't really see the steam or anything. So... It was that way many years ago, but slowly but surely, it's dying. I hope you have a nice day, sir. You too, sir. Thank you so much. So glad that we had the opportunity to talk to a local like this. What an interesting place to visit. I can imagine in like 50, 100 years from now, everything's gonna be like tall forest and what you've seen today, it's gonna be completely different. Yeah, it's like I was saying earlier, it's in like an episode of life after people, especially when you're you know, looking at it from above, you just see this kind of grid layout with all this pavement going to nowhere. It was like someone built the roads before they built the houses. So if you want to come here to Centralia to check it out, it's definitely not hard to find. Yeah, just when you come here, remember that although the place is technically abandoned, there are still a few people here who consider this home. So be respectful. Uh, there's boundaries here. Don't go running in around uh, the, the church or the graveyards and things like that. People care very deeply about this kind of stuff. Yeah, so if you like this video as much as we like making it, give us a thumbs up on YouTube. And if you want to subscribe to our channel and follow our adventures to other interesting places around North America, click the subscribe button. And if you want to get notifications every time we post something new, ring the bell. All right, thank you guys for watching. <laughs> thank you. Is it six or five? Five. It was one of originally six. <laughs> oh, kind of behind bar. Nope, she's actually just outside. <laughs>